So, uh, Emmanuel Difo, thank you very much for coming on to WIDAD. Uh, we are always very excited when we have guys like you come over and share your experience. So for those of you that don't know, Emmanuel Defour has an MBA in business management. And right now he works a lot with students trying to help them develop a digital experience. So I and Emmanuel have known each other for so many years now. And uh, he has been very gracious to come on today and help uh, our viewers, or those of you on WIDOT, to know what are some of the challenges that you might have to face or have to overcome before starting a digital business. So I'm gonna ask Emmanuel to introduce himself to you guys and uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you so much, Mr. Joel. Um, it's been a pleasure. I've actually been watching your, your videos on, 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 on just looking at the growth and everything that you're doing. I think what you're doing is extremely inspirational and you know, yeah. I'm glad to be here. And I, I, and I think that it's, it's gonna open doors to so many people just you know, for me to share my experience with you. I feel like my experience just one out of so many, and I'm, I'm glad that you're giving me the platform to talk, talk about some of the things that I've learned over the years. Yeah, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm currently in Chicago, not looking forward to the winter at all. Um, I, I spend my day to day just working with students from around the world and really trying to help them access opportunities from across the globe, right? From my experience from someone with a person of color coming uh, to America as an immigrant, I, I faced so many challenges and I, I wanted a door and pathway for myself. So my, my life work over the past couple of years has been focused around how can I build students' um, digital learning experiences, be it you know how to start your career or how to learn about a certain field or industry. I work with a fantastic team of individuals at Upkey, wow. and also I've been fortunate to collaborate with some of the best minds in, in, in the United States that I've had the privilege to talk to and work with. And my, my goal is that I can just impact one life one day at a time, and hopefully that can translate and create a ripple effect where I can impact so many people from around the world to have a better future for themselves, especially um, during this period of uncertainty in, in, in COVID hopefully that I can make a small and meaningful impact in just a few people's life. I think to me, that is going to be my biggest accomplishment. Wow. That was, that's an impressive uh, resume right there. And just like you, I'm also an immigrant. And um, sometimes when we're traveling out, when we travel out of our country, uh, we think life is easier. But then, you know, you move out and things are so much different. I'm sure you've also had uh, challenges during your career path. You've had up and downs. And um, but you had a motivation, you had a passion, you had a vision, and that is what kept you going. And right now you are getting to a position where you can start impacting the life of uh, other uh, immigrants or people that are going to come after us. So I'm very, very happy. I think today is going to be an interesting uh, conversation <laughs> with you. I and, hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was going to say, uh, so has it been easy? So if you... Let's say we had someone that was going to travel and go to a country abroad. Uh, is, it, is it an easy experience or is it something that um, is difficult? Because for me, it was very, very difficult. I don't say this much, but when I came here, uh, I worked in a trip store. And the very first time I was given any form of money was a dollar for the whole day. Uh, oh. But for you, with, with you um, how was your experience? Is it something easy? Or is this something that uh, anyone can do? Yes. And, you know, I think this is something that a lot of immigrants, I don't care if you're from Cameroon or even Africa, India, whatever. Whenever you, 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 you leave your homeland and you, you're trying to go to a foreign environment, you, you, number one, you're taking risk. But you're taking risk um, for, for a goal, for a reason. And for, for most people, is for a better life, for more opportunities because where they're from, maybe the opportunities that they want doesn't really present itself. And for me, it was the same case, right? My, my situation was not, not different from any other person that wanted to leave where they were to travel abroad, be the United States, the UK, whatever it is, I don't care. And yeah. it's, it's never an easy journey. It's, it's not easy. But I think that for most people, the, 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 
the, the fact that you are just taking that step, that leap of faith, and B, there's so many things that come into, in, 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 into, into play, right? It could be some people want to do it, but they don't have access to the financial resources to do it, which, is kind of, which kind of sucks. But for me, I was fortunate enough to have that opportunity, and I seized on the opportunity. But coming to the United States, it was, it was just a culture shock on, on, on all fronts. It was a culture yeah. shock, both from um, the, the education, both from the way the social environment is just set up based on the way that people talk, the way they look at you and how, you know, you feel like you're not in your zone. And for every student, it's the same thing. So it's been, it's been filled with a lot of, you know, troughs and crests, you know, high and lows. And, it, yeah. and up to this day, I still see those high and lows. But I think that one thing that I always look back on myself and I look at, I ask myself, why am I here? What, what is my goal for being here? And when, especially yeah. when I look back and I see some of my family members, which is kind of crazy to talk about this and the lack of opportunities that are presented in, in, in the country that I'm from, in the city that I'm from, it gives me more motivation to know that I'm fortunate. I'm so, so fortunate to be where I'm at today. And I do not take any opportunity or any day that I'm here for granted. I seize an opportunity that I want to, and I make sure that when I get into a room, even if I'm not the smartest person in the room, I'm going to be the hardest working person in that room, and I'm going to outperform everybody. Oh yeah, that's uh, you. Uh, that's right. Um, like you said, uh, cultural shock or something. Also, I faced. I left Cameroon. I went to Belgium. Then I left Belgium. I came to America. And those two countries, they're completely different. Yeah. Even though you're, you're like you're abroad, but they're two different uh, um, experiences. I remember the very first time was online education. Uh, oh, I was always late yeah. submitting those assignments. <laughs> <laughs> 12 o'clock assignments, I hated those. It was so difficult even reading those lectures and understanding what the uh, teacher wanted. And there was this mm. chat groups that you had to go in there and comment on somebody's um, paper just to have points i mean that was that was difficult um also yeah in I'm, gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna take yeah. this one funny story sorry to cut you short um i think it was like this capstone i had to submit the first capstone it was a leadership course and one of my very good professor um i was having lunch with him the other day i before i submitted that course because i had to learn apa and i had a bad 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 migraine i'll never forget that experience so yeah those experiences i do not miss them Oh, you, you are so right. Let me tell you one funny thing. The very first uh, challenge I had to face was a date. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like we write a date by a day, month, and year. Mm-hmm. And I was writing my papers and having it, having them in verse. Uh-huh. So I got in trouble if I had to write a date in March <laughs> or April. That was a big challenge for me also. And I also remember uh, that APA thing. Remember how you write a customized with a Z and an S? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of those phonetics uh, uh, errors that my English paper was horrible. Trust me. I struggled to pass English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I, I woke up it, that <laughs> 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 uh, I think that's what makes the podcast interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, my English was horrible. I had to relearn how to write uh, the American way to class. Uh, with yeah. that said, I know there's so many uh, to, uh, to uh, cover today. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to pick up your brains uh, to help fellow students. You mm-hmm. seem to be doing the same thing that I'm doing. Uh, young widow is a lot about mentoring and uh, having guys like you that have all this experience come on here and share them with the hope that if there is someone, you know, in the next future that wants to do the same thing, then have at least um, something that they can refer to. So the very first thing Chris I want to ask you will be if somebody has to wanted to get if somebody wanted to get in contact with you, how can they find you? Like your LinkedIn or your Facebook? Yeah, LinkedIn is probably the social media that I'm most like active and popular on, believe it or not. Um I Facebook, I, I rarely go there. LinkedIn is probably the best way to reach out to me. Emmanuel and D4. Okay. So we're just gonna put it, we're gonna put a link to your LinkedIn. So if anyone wants to reach you and ask you direct questions, you're available. Nice. Thank you for, <laughs> for doing that. So today is uh, we're going to talk about how to start a business with little or no capital. I know this is uh, COVID has changed the world. It's never going to be the same. Everything is moving digital. So we are going to a digital empire. 
I know already uh, there are already so many malls that are shutting down because they cannot yeah. catch up. And we have a lot of uh, business offices that are also shutting down. So all these empires are going to go online, which means that there's going to be a need for online experiences in almost every field. So you are someone that you're out there helping people uh, get digital experience to cope with this digital market that is coming. Is it possible right now? Is it too late for anyone to get into a digital space and start a business with no capital? Yeah, um, I, I kind of want to break that question into into just a couple of like bit size um, portions, so I can break it down a little bit, if you don't okay. mind. And 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 the reason for that is because I, I think that while while most students and most you know aspiring professionals or you know even people that are in the workforce that are trying to switch careers or whatever. They, they, they look at the need to have a digital presence. It could be, you know, doing like the regular stuff like e-commerce or, you know, on, and all those things. But I think that you, talking about the impact of the pandemic in, 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 in the economy, one of the, one of the parts that really has been affected the most is, is education, right? Because most people, they, they look at education as that way out. And especially for folks like like myself that came to the United States for education, right? That has been completely disrupted. So I, I think that th there is so much more work that could be done to for for, for students that are in, in in that 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 space of dilemma that they don't know what to do, to 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 think about what else can I do? What set of skills can I add to 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 my toolbox so that I can I can become a little bit more marketable. And we, we, we are going to flush that out over the next couple of minutes um, um, with you um, here today. And when, when the work I do is it's to give students the opportunity to build new skills, right? And unfortunately, it's all through this digital media that we are currently um, interacting with right now. So my 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 hope and my goal is is that for students and for folks that you know want to come out of this they have to understand the need to add new skills and it could be tech 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 technical skills like you know learning how to code learning how to you know do anything in the it space or it could be how to start your own business in this you know this new not the new digital economy but now the just the uprise of this tremendous need for everything to be communicated with, um, to, to individuals in this digital space. So I think that everybody has the ability to, to do something different. They have the ability to start a business. They have the ability to learn new skills that are transferable, not just to their business, but to other people's lives and impact themselves and impact the communities. And I think that if we can teach ourselves something and teach some other person, then we build an ecosystem that can collectively work together and be more sustainable. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty correct. I always tell people uh, like a business, you can start a business easily. What I tell them is, for example, you go where there are students or students dorm dormitory. And at the end of the school year, those that are graduating, most of the mm -hmm. time cannot carry everything they have. So mm -hmm. they end up uh, putting those by the roadside. So you can actually uh, wait for the end of the, the school term, go there, pick this stuff, because uh, by law, most of the time, when something is left on the roadside, it's considered an abandonment. It mm -hmm. just depends on the law of that state. And you can pick some of this stuff and sell them on eBay, Amazon, uh, and probably Craigslist, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And then that's, that's you having no capital, but right there, whatever profit you make from selling this stuff on the, online, you can now use that money and buy maybe some other things. I even told others that you could go to like a dollar store and mm -hmm. they have very nice stuff in dollar store that are like a dollar. You don't necessarily have to buy them. Just use your phone, take very good pictures, come online, put it on your uh, you know Amazon, eBay and sell them. And when somebody puts an order, you now run to the dollar store, you buy the stuff and you ship it to them. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so yeah, so... Um, if you, is it possible can, can I can I add oh yeah yeah I wanted to I wanted to add something on that which is another perspective of, of you know lack of capital and I think this is an important um, topic to kind of like build on it because most often when when you think about or you ask someone why are you not doing X y and Z 
And the one question, the one answer that always comes to mind is, oh, I don't have the money, I don't have the capital, and then everything. And I, and I strongly believe it's because of how we define capital, right? The, how we look at capital. And you have given a very good example of how you can leverage some things that are there for you to just leverage and yeah. without needing any like fiscal capital, and you can get it done. But another set of, of, of valuable um, another perspective of, of to look at capital is just your social capital, your network, your ability to connect with people, right? In my world, in, in, in the startup ecosystem, the startup space, and the work that I do with a lot of students, the work I do with a lot of professionals is as equally as people look at fiscal capital, it's as important to look at your network because that is something that is going to translate to fiscal capital over time if you utilize it correctly. An example of that is going to be if you are someone who is trying to get something done, right? You're trying to, let's say, start a business. You're trying to, you know, apply for college. You're trying to get a loan. You're trying to solve your credit card debt because at the end of the day, that, that, that is important to you. It contributes to how you run your life having people in your network or accessing that knowledge from someone to help for you to help solve that problem gives you so much to work with. Right. And, and there, there is this uh, company in Chicago called futures founder, and they work with a lot of youths from the Chicagoland area, students from low income, first generation families that are considered like below the poverty line. And they go to those communities, talk to those students, you know, look at the ideas, the problems that are in those communities and provide access to social capital for those students so that they can work on that idea. So one thing that I would encourage people to do is the monetary value of capital is, is important to look at, but also look at what else. If I don't have the money and I, I, I can't do what TK was just saying right now, what else can I do? I think the ability for you to build network that can give you access to knowledge. And I think that's true capital because I think that a lot of the times when we think about the, the dividing the economy and the dividing the wall, it's not just because I'm black or he's white or whatever. It's just because of lack of access to that knowledge, right? So I, I think that it's important for us to, to touch on, on the importance of things like this, encouraging people to, to reach out to people. You don't have to you know, stay within your network, your community and think that that's how you're gonna grow and that's how you're gonna take the next leap. It, 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 it's going to come as a result of external forces impacting your knowledge. Of course, you need to be careful about how you go around getting that knowledge. But I think that if you are just blind to the fact that where you are is okay and it's going to give you everything you need, then I think that's a recipe for disaster. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, what you just said about the uh, physical capital and also about a network uh, capital, I also I call them uh, a mental capital, relationship capital, and financial capital. Uh, you said uh, the very first thing is mental capital, which is you having a knowledge and being able to grow that knowledge into a skill. And but a very important part, which you said about relationship, cap uh, relationship capital, which is a network. Uh, networking with people should be something on everyone's mind. There are always, there's always somebody that knows something that we do not know. They have gone through the process. They know the up and down and they can help us avoid making the same mistakes because at times the, the rate at which we can grow is based on how the fewer mistakes we make, right? Everybody does mistakes. Everybody has yeah. to learn something and go through that process. But if you have this network of people that have grown through these channels and they know the hot spots and the down, downfall, they can help you and uh, you know accelerate you go faster 